Welcome to part 5 of time series analysis. We concluded the last video with Dickey Fuller test, a test that we conducted to determine whether a time series is covariant stationary or not. In this video, we'll see how we can correct the time series if it is not covariant stationary and later we'll see the seasonality in an AR model. So let's begin with correcting for non-stationarity or when a time series has a unit root. Now, if the time series is not covariant stationary, then we can make it covariant stationary by a process which is known as first differencing. Let us understand what this process of first differencing is about. In first differencing, what we do is, from the current value of the time series, we subtract the immediate previous value and we follow this process through which we get an entirely new time series which is basically the change in the original time series. So for example, suppose that the original time series is x and we determine that this time series x follows a random walk, say without a drift. So we have already learned that we can model for a random walk time series as xt equals xt minus 1 plus the error term. Now we also know that a time series that follows a random walk, in this case x, is not covariant stationary. So x here is not covariant stationary, but we want to make it covariant stationary and we can do that through first differencing. So for this we will create a new time series which we get from subtracting the value of x in the immediately preceding period from the current value of x. So if the current value of x is xt then the value of x in the immediate preceding period will be xt minus 1 and the new time series that we will get by subtracting these values, say we call that new time series yt, that will be equal to xt minus xt minus 1, where yt is the new time series that we are getting by subtracting the immediately previous value of x from the current value of x. Now, we already know that xt is equal to xt minus 1 plus the error term. If you substitute this entire thing in this equation, what will be left is the error term. And we get yt equals the error term. This is the equation or the time series which we get after the process of first differencing. Now, we went through first differencing because we wanted to make the time series covariance stationary. So we did that and we got a new time series which is yt. Now we need to check whether this time series is covariance stationary or not. For this we already know that it, for a time series to be covariance stationary, it needs to have a constant and a finite mean level. So let's calculate the mean reverting level of this new time series that we have got and we know that mean reverting level can be calculated as B0 by 1 minus B1. If you look at this new time series we know that the value of B0 is 0 and also the value of B1 is 0. So we get 0 by 1 which is equal to 0. Now a mean reverting level of 0 is finite and hence the time series yt which we got from first differencing is covariance stationary. In this way any non-stationary series can be made covariance stationary with first differencing. Now let's move on to the second LOS which is seasonality in an AR model. 
Now in time series when we talk about seasonality it basically means a pattern which is repeating itself over time that time may be a period of 1 year or less than that now whenever seasonality is present it is very important to incorporate the effect of seasonality in the ar model because if we do not do that then all the conclusions that we are drawing from the model tend to be incorrect now let's see an example to learn how we can detect seasonality in a time series and how we can re-specify the AR model to correct for seasonality. So here I have taken an example. In this example, it says that suppose you want to predict a hotel's occupancy levels. You collect occupancy level data for the last 53 quarters and decide to model the quarterly occupancy levels using the AR1 model and you get the following result. So you have taken an AR1 model and the AR1 model is given as ln xt equals b0 plus b1 ln xt minus 1 plus et and below you are given the result for this model. So look at the result. In the first table, you are given the intercept, the lag, the coefficient, the standard errors and the t-statistics for the intercept B0 and for the lag 1. Now, in the second table, you are given the autocorrelation of residuals for 4 lags and similarly for each of these 4 lags, you are given the value of autocorrelation, standard error and t-statistic. Finally, you are asked to do two things in this question. First, you are asked to determine whether seasonality is present or not. And in the second half, it is saying that if seasonality is present, then correct for the presence of seasonality, meaning that re-specify the original model. But before re-specifying, we need to check whether seasonality is present or not. To do that, Look at the table of autocorrelation of residuals. Now you must be familiar with this table. We discussed this in the video of time series analysis part 2. There we used this table to check for the AR model fit. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to see it before proceeding forward. For those who are familiar, the table here contains the residual autocorrelations for the first four lags of the time series. Now, to check for seasonality, we need to check if any of the lagged correlations are statistically significantly different from zero. Very similar to the way we did in case of checking for the AR model fit. So, the null hypothesis that we have for each of these lags is that of no autocorrelation against the alternate hypothesis that autocorrelation is present. Now we need to conduct the t-test. For that we need to find the critical t-value. For finding out the critical t-value we need to find out the degree of freedom which is given by n minus 2. Now n here is 52. Now why 52 and not 53? In the question it is given the last 53 quarters but I just said that the number of observations is 52. Well if you are using an AR1 model then we lose one observation. Similarly if we were to use an AR2 model then we would lose two observations but here it is AR1 model so we will lose one observation which makes the number of observations as 52. So n is 52 minus 2 so we get 50 degrees of freedom. Now we can get the critical t value of 50 degrees of freedom at 5% level of significance from the t table 
This is a two-tailed test and from there you can get the critical T value as 2.01 approximately. So let us draw the timeline. We have minus 2.01 and plus 2.01. Now let's check which of these T statistics is significant from zero. Now the value of T statistic at lag 1 lies within the interval of plus minus 2.01. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis and since we cannot reject it we say that there is no autocorrelation present. So it is alright. Similar is the case with the T statistic value at lag 2 and lag 3. In both these cases also we cannot reject the null hypothesis. But look at the T statistic value at lag 4. The value of 5.784 lies outside the interval of plus minus 2.01. Hence we reject the null hypothesis in case of lag 4 of no autocorrelation and say that autocorrelation is present. So from this we know that the model is not fit. But how do we know if there is seasonality present in the data? Well, isn't it peculiar that we took quarterly data and autocorrelation is zero is significantly different from zero at lag 4 itself. Well, it is not a coincidence. It basically shows that seasonality is present in the time series. Similarly, if we had taken a monthly data, then a zero autocorrelation at lag 12 would indicate the presence of seasonality. In this way, by testing the correlations of the error terms, we can conclude that seasonality is present and that the occupancy levels in each quarter are not only related to the previous quarter, but also related to the corresponding quarter in the previous year. What does it mean? It means that if the current quarter is quarter 2 2016, then the quarter 2 2016 occupancy levels are related to quarter 1 2016 occupancy levels. Of course, that is why we decided to use a AR1 model. But because of seasonality, the quarter 2 2016 occupancy levels are also related to the corresponding quarter in the previous year which is quarter 2 2015. This is because of the presence of seasonality. So now we have determined that seasonality is present. So the first part of question is done. Now this in the second part of the question we need to correct for the presence of seasonality. Now to correctly specify the model, we use the AR1 model with a seasonal lag. So the original model was ln xt equals b0 plus b1 ln xt minus 1 plus the error term. Now test suggested that a seasonal lag of 4 is present. Because at lag 4, the autocorrelation was significantly different from 0. So what we do to correct for this seasonality is that we add this to our model. And now the model becomes ln xt equals b0 plus b1 ln xt minus 1 plus b2 ln xt minus 4 plus the error term. Here this is the term for seasonal lag and the seasonal lag 
is 4. Hence, here we have x t minus 4. Note, very important, that for this model, the order of this model still remains 1. It is neither 2 nor is it 4. It is still an AR1 model. It is simply an AR1 model with a seasonal lag term. Now, there is a continuation to the previous example. In this example, now we have incorporated the seasonal lag term in the original model and obviously the new model is this which is the model in which the seasonality has been taken care of and after running the, this model the result that we get is this and the question is asking us to determine if this model is correctly specified. Now to determine this look at the table of autocorrelation of residuals. In this table we cannot reject any of the null hypothesis in any of these residual lags because all of these t statistic values lie within the range of critical t values of minus plus 2.01. Hence, we see through this example that by incorporating a seasonal lag term in the model and changing the model from ln xt equals b0 plus b1 ln xt minus 1 plus the error term to this new model we have eliminated for seasonality. That's it for today. If you found this video to be useful, please show your support by hitting the like button below. For any queries, feel free to post a comment and I'll get back to you with answers. Finally, to stay updated with latest such videos, subscribe now to Infinity Institute of Professional Studies. Happy learning!